horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! There's danger on the trail ahead! I own silver! Boy! The Lone Ranger and Tonto started on the trail of an outlaw in Texas. Weeks of travel in relentless pursuit took them into the mountainous, snow-covered high border country just south of Canada. Having captured the outlaw and turned him over to the local authorities... The masked man and Tonto stayed in the copper-filled hills around Copperville because of a boy of 14 named Daniel. There was something about this boy that made both the Lone Ranger and his Indian friend want to know Dan better. Tonto had deeply planted thoughts about the boy, but he kept these to himself. The Lone Ranger saw in Dan many qualities that amazed him. Oh, Silver, oh, look out, old fella. Oh, oh. There's where Martin has his office, Tonto. We'll go and see him. Uh, Dan not work there now. Yes, I know it. That's why I came today. I wanted to talk to Mr. Martin when Dan wasn't there. You think Martin know about Dan? He's a big fella. <laughs> there, Silver. Dan's helped Mr. Martin in the office from time to time. We'll see. How do you... Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I came to speak to Mr. Martin. Is he here? He's my father. I, I know who you are. You do? Please listen to me. Daniel has said so much about you... I know you're not an outlaw. Oh? I know that everything you've done has been for the good of... But the fact that you wear a mask... I I know that Father would want to help you, but the law... Miss Martin, what are you trying to say? Oh, father is talking to some sort of lawman in the other room. I, I think it might be you they're talking about. Please go, hurry. I know my father wouldn't want you taken. But the law isn't after me. Then why... Are you sure I'm the subject of discussion? Well, well no, not exactly. I... But I ask your father about Dan. Oh, he isn't in trouble. He hasn't done anything wrong. By no means. Quite the contrary. He's done so much that's right that I'd uh, like to know more about him. We, we all think an awful lot of him. For a boy of 14, he seems to be so, so well informed. And he has such high ideals. I've been impressed by him. While you're waiting for father, do you mind if I say something? No, not at all. I, we, well, everyone likes Dan... They all know how he made you his ideal long before you came here to the North Country. For years, he's been devouring every shred of information he could get about you. He has? Yes, and his grandmother told him a lot of things about you, too. She heard them from the people who had been in the South. The point I'm trying so poorly to make is just this. D don't let that boy down. I don't intend to. He has said something to Father about working with you, helping you. There's a lot a boy with Dan's ideals can do. 
His grandmother needs him. I thought she did. She isn't as strong as she appears. Dr. Sawyer feels that her tired old heart may give out at any time. Dr. Sawyer? Yes, he's our only doctor here in Cor- Copperville. It ends places with his grandmother as long as she needs him. And and then what? Well, I don't know. I'm right sorry I can't be of more help to you. We'll appreciate what help you can give and have given, Mr. Martin. Thank you. Good day, Miss Betty. Good day. Well, Mr. Brelt, I believe. Mm, mask. A uh, friend of mine, Brelt. Mask. man is connected with the law in Canada. Yes, I know. I've heard of him. Have you ever seen him before? No, I haven't. He wasn't in uniform. No. Brelt, the grimmest of all manhunters, needs no uniform. I saw the way he looked at you. He wanted to question my mask. Please don't think me presumptuous in calling you a friend. It saved a lot of explanation. I'm honored, Mr. Martin. Thank you. I suppose you've already introduced yourself, Betty. Yes, Father. The Lone Ranger came to ask about Dan. Dan? Mr. Martin... What's the boy's last name? His last name? The same as his grandmother's, Frisbee. Why? Oh, then she is his grandmother. Well, yes. What made you question it? Yes, why do you ask that? I, well, it's something too vague to explain. I, I'm interested in the boy. I thought he might be someone else. As far as I know, he's the grandson of Mrs. Frisbee. He's always lived here, at least as far back as I know. Martin, I want to talk to you. Oh, Higgins. Yeah, Higgins. Oh, so the masked man's here, too. What are you scheming? I was going to send for you, Higgins. You're through. Through? Fired. I don't want crooks working here. You lied when you got the job. Oh, so that's it. Brelt was talking, huh? Brelt asked if you were employed in the Martin Copper Mines. I told him you were. Yeah. So then that trouble-making bloodhound shot off his mouth about me, huh? He gave me a few facts that disagreed with what you told me about yourself. Well, Brelt's got no power south of the border. He can't touch me here. This ain't Canada. Canadian police ain't no authority here. I know that. So does Brelt. So you're firing me on his say-so. I'm firing you because I don't want your kind working for me. <laughs> all right. Give me my pay. Here you are, Mr. Higgins. Oh. You got it all ready for me, huh? Is that the right amount? It'll do. But you get this, Martin. You can't make me leave town, see? I know my rights, and you can't run me out of town and over the border. I don't intend to bother about you, as long as you stay away from here. And you needn't be scared, neither, Savvy. I ain't even gonna make no trouble. <laughs> you don't need to call in the Lone Ranger to protect you from me. Get out of here. I always thought you was yeller, Martin. But I didn't think you'd scream to the Lone Ranger for protection. I said get. <laughs> Horrible person. The law wants him in Canada. Yes, murder. He knows better than to cross the border, then. He knows he's safe this side of Coon Creek. The creek runs on the borderline. You say he's wanted for murder? Yes, and as cowardly a murder as ever has been committed. He stabbed an old woman in the back, so she couldn't make an outcry when he entered her home to steal her lifetime savings. He should be taken back to Canada. Oh, it wouldn't do. Why not? The lawmen are very particular. Unless Higgins crosses the border of his own volition, they can't touch him. Well, he as much as said that you asked the Lone Ranger to protect us from him, Dad. He called you a rank coward. Yes, but that doesn't matter. And he recognized me. He'll be on guard whenever I'm around. He probably will make a point of watching what I do, suspecting that I'll try and turn him over to the law. Mr. Martin, I... Oh, Jumpers, Ginger, the Lone Ranger's here. Hello, Dan. Golly, I didn't expect to find you here. Sure am glad to see you. Well, see, I've been telling Graham about your plans. My plan? Well, you know, someday I could work with you. Oh, yes, that's right, Dan. Someday. Uh, She sure was pleased. She said she'd sure like me to travel as your sidekick. How is your grandmother, Dan? Oh, she's pretty good. She doesn't seem to be as spry as she was. Gee, I wish there was some way I could make her feel stronger. Dan, I'd like to talk to you. Sure. Perhaps you can help me right now. Mr. Martin, I was to work here today. Oh, go ahead with the Lone Ranger, Dan. Betty will help me here in the office. Dan might be able to help carry out a little plan to put our friend on the north side of the border, Mr. Martin. Fine. What can I do? Hey, Dan. Danny. Hey. Huh? What? See, I, I ran to get here. I got a note that I was to hand you. A note? Yeah. Here it is. Well, may I read it, Mr. Martin? Of course. I think Dan might not be watched as closely as I'll be. He might carry out a certain part of a plan to turn that killer Higgins over to the Royal Canadian Mounted. Uh, 
I've got to leave you. Uh, Dan, what's the matter? What is it, Dan? I can't tell you now. I've got to leave here, that's all. Goodbye. Dan, you were going to help me put Higgins in jail. I, I can't, that's all. I can't do anything now. What of all things? What was that note? Cracky, I don't know. It was just give to me by some gent, that's all I know. I wonder if Higgins... He seemed to be shaking as soon as Higgins' name was mentioned. It might have been a threat. If Higgins threatened that boy, I'll... Uh, hold on. What are you going to do? The sooner we act, the better. Gosh, Pa, I, I don't know how to explain it. But I feel as if there's a lot of blasting powder just getting ready to explode. With Tonto riding at his side, the Lone Ranger raced for the small, well-concealed camp in the woods. There, he and the Indian made plans. We'll find out about Dan later on, Tonto. The first thing to do is find out why he acted so strangely when he got that note. Uh -huh. Then dispose of Higgins. We can take the time to learn more about Dan's past. While I ride to Dan's home, you ride to the border, to Coon Creek. Examine it very carefully. Who? Oh, who's over, steady boy? Who? Oh. We'll see what Dan has to say, silver old fella. Dan! Dan, I want to speak to you. I can't let you in. Please believe me. I believe anything you say, Dan. What can I do to help? Nothing. Would you care to show me the note you received? Nope. I, I can't. I see. You going after Higgins? That's the program. That's what I thought. Do you know any reason why we shouldn't? No, sir. Or any reason why we should? Oh, sure you should. He's a killer. If Mr. Martin fired him, he'll make no end of trouble around here. He might mis hire Mr. Martin or Miss Betty. I wish I could help. Can't you? No, sir. You'd sooner not say why? I, I can't. That's all there is to it. I, I can't help now. Very well, Dan. I'll see you later. Take care of things. I will. Easy, big fella. Come on, Silver. The Lone Ranger rode hard to join Tonto, who was studying the land on both sides of the creek that followed a course through the woods on the international boundary. Oh, Silver, oh, boy, oh, easy. Tonto, we'll have to work this out alone. Uh, what matter is Dan? I don't know. Him not tell? No, but he has a good reason for what he's doing. I know that. Uh, what's your plan? Well, I've got to locate Higgins. When I do, I'll be in a disguise. Uh, Meanwhile, there are things you've got to do right here in the woods. Uh, me do them. I'll come over this way, and I'll show you the plan I have in mind. And I've got to hurry back to town. I think I can find Higgins in the cafe. I ain't no fool. I know what Martin and that Lone Ranger want. They want me to do something so I can be jailed. They're afraid of me. <laughs> yeah, but I ain't no fool. Nobody ever said you was a fool, Higgins. Sore? Sure, I'm sore at Martin. The army buzzard didn't have to fire me just on account of Brill say so. Sorry to break in, but I'm in a hurry and I want information. What's on your mind, stranger? I want to find a man named Higgins. That's me. Why are you looking for me? You, Higgins? I said I was. Who are you? My name's unimportant, Higgins. I've got something to talk over with you. Mind if we go to the private room? Go ahead. You go first, mister. There. Now, who are you? Where you from? And what do you want of me? Put that gun away, Higgins. There ain't none but the two of us here, stranger. My word's better than yours here. I got friends, Savvy. Well, what of it? You won't get nowhere trying to talk me out of holding iron on you. Say what you got to say and make it short. But first of all, I'll have a look at that there big envelope in your pocket. Go ahead. I am. I'm going Where'd you get this? Why, are you want to... Look at it again, Higgins, before you open it. Mister, if this here is what I think it is, you won't ever leave this room alive. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger, disguised, left Tonto in the woods near the boundary and went to the cafe to talk to Higgins. In the back room, Higgins drew a gun and held it on the Lone Ranger while he looked the outside of an envelope. I'm going to show you that anyway, Higgins. You needn't have thrown a gun on me to take it. What's this mean? Evidence against Ace Higgins. Higgins, you know what you've done. So you know what that evidence is all about. Where'd you get this? No one ever committed a perfect crime. You should realize that. You take your guns out slow and lay them on the table. Aim to have a look at what's inside this envelope. I thought we might make a deal. Any dealing will do. It'll be on my terms, Savvy. Oh, I doubt that. Oh, you doubt it, huh? Even while you're looking down the barrel of my gun. That information was supposed to reach one of two men. Yeah? Martin or the Lone Ranger. So that's it, huh? They've been gunning for me for some time and selling for evidence. I said to unholster your guns. Yes, I heard you say that. You said put them on the table. Well, do it. Oh, not just yet. I... No, you don't. Oh. Not this way. Oh. Why, you want to... Now, shut up and listen to me. You can talk better without a gun in your hand. Oh, yeah. I almost busted my wrist. Until you're faster, you shouldn't play with guns, Higgins. What's inside that envelope? Let me see it. I might have if you hadn't decided to take the deal. I don't like to have a gun pointed at me. I don't like to be talked to that way. All right, all right. You got the whip hand now? What's your proposition? I suppose you're hunting me up to sell it to me? You, you are willing to sell me that envelope? I might have been for the right price. Let me see the inside of it. Oh, I've changed my mind, Higgins. What do you mean, change your mind? I don't like you. Uh, are you loco? Why? Well, you don't have to like me to make a business deal. Maybe you can make a sale if you show me what's in there. Oh, I never done anything wrong, but maybe there's a mistake somewhere. The only mistakes are the ones you've made. You see, there's always likely to be a witness to what a man does. But now we don't deal. I'll take this where I was supposed to. Hey, I heard some scuffling. Is there anything wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Hey, look here, let me have a look at the inside of that, will you? No, Higgins. I'm going to take it to Mr. Martin. Maybe he'll know what to do with it. The Lone Ranger, still disguised, left the cafe and went to Martin's home. He handed the sealed envelope to the owner of the copper mine, apparently unaware that Higgins had followed silently and watched from a vantage point outside an open window. Open it up, Mr. Martin. Read it all the way through before you comment. Very well. While my father is reading this, can't I get you something to eat or drink? Oh, no, thank you. By thunderation. Dad. This beats everything I ever heard. Why? What is it? Uh, just a minute. I'd better take one more look at a few of the lines here. They mean exactly what they say. Uh, <laughs> well, fine. So there's evidence to put that ornery killer into jail, even if he doesn't cross the creek and go to Canada. I think Higgins will land where he should, Mr. Martin. It wouldn't be possible for you or the sheriff to put him there. Uh, well, how about yourself? I was told that there was a man around here called the Lone Ranger. Oh, yes, there is. Good. <laughs> you sound as if you thought pretty well of him, Betty. Oh, I do. I, I admire him more than any man I know. <laughs> well, Dad, what are you laughing at? Oh, nothing, Betty. Nothing at all. Mr. Martin... Is there any chance that you'll be seeing this man who's called the Lone Ranger? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Then you can tell him where to find me. As I can, if I know. Where will you be? I'm uh, going to camp just this side of the creek. The creek? You mean, you mean Coon Creek? Yes. I'll keep a fire going all night, so it'll be easy to find my camp. We needn't camp in the open. There's room here in my house. Thanks, but I think it'll be easier for me to pass on the contents of that envelope if I'm alone when the time comes. Suit yourself. Maybe you've got a reason for wanting to be near the creek. It's, uh, it's on the borderline, you know. Yes, I know. I'll take that envelope with me. Very well. And say... Yes, sir. When you, when you see the Lone Ranger, you might tell him how Betty feels toward him. Good evening, Mr. Martin. So, you'll be camping alone, the ornery coyote. Higgins, having overheard the conversation in Martin's comfortable house by standing near the window, made grim plans. I'll get him there. I'll get him before the Lone Ranger can get to him. That's what I'll do. I can't afford to take chances. A short time later, a campfire gleamed in the woods at night. 
flickering light reflected from the snow and outlined the dark, uneven line that was a stream of running water known as Coon Creek. Higgins saw the light and a figure busily engaged in fashioning a lean-to. Alone there. That's good. I'll get him. It's a good thing there's a plenty of snow. He couldn't hear me if I ran as hard as I could. His horse is tethered nearby. Whatever he could have seems to know I'm coming. Who is it? Yeah, he likely thinks I'm the man he's waiting for, the Lone Ranger. Who is it? I, uh, I reckon you're expecting me. Come on, then. Come near the fire where I can see you. I'm right here. There's guns leveled at you. Oh, hello, Higgins. But, Mast. Yes. You're, you're here first. You... See here. What's this mean? What do you think it means? Who did you expect to find here? Don't you make a move, you're covered. And this time, you won't get that chance to slap my gun aside. Keep your distance. I'm not moving closer to you. What are you after? You know darn well what I'm after. I'm after that the envelope. Envelope? The one you showed me earlier. And the one you showed Martin. Oh, yes. He wasn't wearing that mask then. What's your game, anyhow? The only thing I have in mind, Higgins, is to see you turned over to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Eh? Well, I won't be, see? Not as long as I stay south of the border. Now, give me that envelope. There it is, on that log near the fire. Good. Stand still. Once you make a move or I'll shoot. Yeah. <laughs> there goes all that evidence. <laughs> it's just as well. Huh? What do you mean by that? All there was in that was a note to Mr. Martin telling him that you'd be listening to what I said to him, telling him what to say to me. What? 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 You said it was something about me. I said it would put you where you belong, and it will. Oh, not now it won't. It's all burned up. But it has, Higgins. You knew you'd done things in the States, things for which you should have been jailed. You thought there was proof of those things in the envelope. Well, that envelope brought you here, to Canada. Well, you're loco. You're crazy, loco. This ain't Canada. It sure as thunder is. Uh, what the... Drop that gun, killer. Brent. And me here to back him up. Hey, look here. You can't touch you're me. You're on Canadian soil right now, Higgins. I ain't. This is United States. I'm south of Coon Creek. <laughs> There's the creek right over there. But the border is south of here. Maybe you forgot that the creek's frozen over and covered with snow. You walked right over it, coming to this campfire. Uh, I tell you, it's a lie. I can see the creek. And me fix that stream of water. Me dig channel in snow, turn part of creek into channel. Hey, this ain't legal. It ain't right. It's legal, Higgins. You came here for your own free will. And the minute you stepped over the border, we were here to put you under arrest for murder. And I have men with me to bear witness. Come along, Cotto. Huh? Be ready. Adios, Bell. Wait, let me thank you. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come. Leaving the outlaw Higgins in the capable hands of the Northwest Mounted Police, the Lone Ranger and Tonto headed back for the little mining town of Copperville. And as they rode, one question kept going through the mind of the masked man. Why had Dan, who admired the Lone Ranger more than any other person in the world, refused to go with him to capture Higgins? Finally, Silver and Scout were brought to a halt in front of the house where Grandma Frisbee and Dan lived. Oh, Silver, ho, boy, ho. Oh, Scout, ho, fella. Yeah, this time, Toto, I think Dan will tell us why he didn't stay with us. Easy, big fella. I'm coming. I can go with you now. Gee, I was hoping you'd be back. Hold on, Dan. We're finished. I came back to see you. Well, come in. For mercy's sake, come in. Thank you. You mean, you mean you're all through with Higgins? Yes, Dan. Come on, Tonto. You come in, too. I'll fix up a bite for the two of you. Come on, Toto. Uh, may come. Where is Higgins? In Canada. He is. Captured by Brelt. Oh, golly. Did you hear that, Graham? Mm -hmm. I told you the Lone Ranger would find a way to get him there. Dan, I, I want to speak to you. Oh, I suppose it looked as if I backed out. I guess I did. No, let me tell it, Daniel. I think the Lone Ranger will understand. You needn't explain. But I want to. I'm... Well... I'm not as young as I might be. Oh, Graham, you'll be all right now. If you just follow the doctor's orders. You see, my heart's pretty old and kind of worn down. And I... Oh, guess I had a worse attack than usual. So Dr. Sawyer sent word for Dan to come here and stay with me. Oh, I... I, I couldn't do much, but I didn't want Graham here alone. Then... Tell me why you didn't say something about this. Well, I, I know it was important for you to deal with Higgins before he made trouble for Mr. Martin and Betty, and maybe a lot of others. Yes, but then... What would you have done if Graham wasn't feeling well? You'd have dropped Higgins and come here with me, wouldn't you? 
Why do you think I would have dropped Higgins? Oh, because you would have. You'd have dealt with him later on. Well, perhaps... And I... while you helped Graham and me, Higgins might have made trouble. Well, I guess I figured that Higgins was more important. Well, it was just a case of the thing that was best for the greatest number. The thing that was best for the greatest number. Mrs. Frisbee. Yes? There's one thing I want to ask you. Everyone says that Dan's last name is Frisbee, the same as yours. That's what he's always been called. Is it truly his name? No. Graham, it isn't. I always thought... Your real name, Daniel, is not Frisbee. Kimosabe, you hear that? Yes. Yes, Tonto, I heard. But why are I'm you... I'm going to leave here now, Mrs. Frisbee. Dan, there are things to be checked on. The most important things in my life. Dan, I'll see you again real soon. Graham, what's he mean? I wonder, Dan. I wonder. And I'll scout for you, Silver! Well, just what lies in back of the young friend's name? What can possibly be the most important thing in the entire career of the Lone Ranger? The answer will come in the next thrilling broadcast. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.